Welcome to this week's edition of Prep Zone Extra Points, sponsored by John Hopper Jeep Chrysler. This week featuring Rick Peterson, Tim Beisel, and Brent Maycock. Hey, high school sports fans. Welcome to another edition of Extra Points, our weekly football wrap-up show. I am Tim Beisel, the executive sports editor here at the Capitol Journal and CG Online, alongside Brent Maycock, our area prep writer, longtime area prep writer, long actually. Time, long time. Uh, we thought, Brent, that we would uh, learn quite a bit about some teams coming into this week. What we really learned, I think, was that uh, Mother Nature can be uh, a formidable cool. foe in her own right. Sometimes we deal with it, and we know it's coming, and yet uh, we can't find a way to work around Mother Nature in, in anticipation rather than being proactive and maybe moving game times up across the board. The, you know, we had a few area schools that did that. My game of the week for the area, Linden and Mission Valley, did that this week. They moved up to a 6 p.m. start. Still didn't help. We right. only got one half of football and then about three minutes of a third quarter in. But... Shawnee Heights and Topeka West. Uh, Shawnee Heights up and Topeka West that moved up uh, 45 minutes. They 45 had a 6:15 right. start tonight. But if you looked at like the Kansas City area, a lot of those games were moved up to 5 p.m. starts, and lo and behold, they all got in. And, and all the games, at least in the city, involving city teams, Centennial League teams, and a lot of area teams, either didn't get started, or only got half the game in, or three quarters of the game in, or called the game early because of the weather. And it's just a shame when when that happens. Absolutely. And it, and it's a it's a thing that can be avoided if you just get all the parties on the same page working towards the same goal, which is putting a good pro product on the field. Yep. And along those lines, I should note that Rick Peterson, our city prep writer, intended to be here with us today, but his game was one of the ones that... Uh, the last one. The, yeah, the last one. <laughs> In the could, state. <laughs> we're taping this at about midnight, um, Saturday morning, I guess it would be, and uh, Rick's still on assignment out at Washington Rule because that game just got called about 15 minutes ago. So uh, I guess we'll start right there with that game if you want. That Rick was at our city game of the week this week, which saw, after a lengthy delay, Manhattan uh, defeat Washburn Rule 28-6. to uh, The game was officially called with 6.41 remaining. Uh, good, good performance for Manhattan and especially Iverson Robb, who had 135 uh, rushing yards on 11 carries and three TDs. Yeah, Robb, uh, a guy that really didn't get a lot of carries last year, uh, was was kind of uh, in in waiting in the backfield. And uh, when they graduated the bulk of their running back situation, uh, now he's kind of stepped up. Last week it was Ian Trapp that had the great game, the quarterback who transferred in last year to Manhattan. A uh, great dual threat guy, and he had a nice game: 175 total yards, 100. Eight passing, uh, but Rob was the guy that really had it had it going tonight. Had a couple big touchdown runs, and and boy, if you can add something in that backfield to go with Ian Trap and that mm -hmm. off the, the offensive line is just outstanding. They're all seniors, they're all multi-year starters, and just a very very dominant force. Rules defense, I actually think, kind of held up okay. Uh, Rob, notwithstanding, Trap, you know, you mentioned that he had about 175 total yards, which you know, holding him to that actually is pretty respectable. Uh, the problem for Washington Rule tonight was that their offense really struggled against that Manhattan defense. Yeah, and, and you know they they put up some points last week against Highland Park, but uh, in just in reading about the game and talking to people, their offense really wasn't uh, you know overly impressive in that victory. They got they got their points, but uh, you know that's they're going to have to get that. I mean, obviously their defense is playing pretty solid right now. I think. I mean, holding Manhattan team pretty good to 28 points that's that's a pretty solid effort so they, they're gonna have to get their offense up and going and you know they play Shawnee Heights next week and that's going to be a great test I think for both teams Shawnee Heights bounces back from their loss last week to Manhattan if you look co comparable scores with them in Manhattan they're pretty similar as to uh, where they finished up so I think uh, you know that'll be a good test to see where Washington draw offense has developed in the first two games. You mentioned Shawnee Heights. We'll jump ahead to that game. Shawnee Heights had an easy time with Topeka West today out at Hummer Schwartz Park. Uh, in two plus quarters, another game that was that didn't make it to its conclusion, but they called it uh, midway through the third quarter. Shawnee Heights defeats West 40 to zero. Heights kind of dominated from the start. That 
The T-Birds actually got off to a really fast start with uh, Wyatt Hubert catching a 56-yard scoring pass from Trey Brown early and then Mitchell Lady returning an interception 15 yards for a score. That's not a bad way to, to get started. No, that'll, that'll get you going. And, and, you know, they got the early start and they weren't affected by uh, by getting out and getting out of their routine, you know, right. which may, maybe that's why these schools kind of try to stick with the 7 o'clock start to kind of stick with the routine. The coaches like their routines and everything. But, you know, Shawnee Heights adapted. They went over and, and – Took care of business against a team they really should take care of, care of business against. And, uh, you know, they they had a tough time last week against Manhattan and, and from week one to week two. Obviously, they, they showed a lot, and, and now we'll really see how much they've improved going against Washington World next week. I think Swift mentioned that even in the game story that Ken Corbett wrote for us. He, he talked about the importance of improving from, from week one to week two, and they certainly looked uh, considerably better. Christian Clark had a big day, rushing for 122 yards and three TDs, including a 95-yarder. And then Trey, Trey Brown had a big night as well, 107 rushing yards and 189 passing yards. Yeah, if you can get something like that from Trey Brown every night, you're going to be in you're going to be in the ball game, and that's that's a nice uh, nice boost when Trey can go out and and do that. Uh, you know, that's good production out of your quarterback, which they've had good production out of their quarterback slot, slot for several years now. And so you get him going, and you can get Christian Clark going in the backfield. Uh, that's just going to help them out a lot more. Probably the best city game that we saw tonight saw Junction City defeat Topeka High 26-21 to in a rare game that actually made it to its its conclusion and played a full four quarters. Uh, High was good. This was one team that we thought we might learn something about. They played a really tough Junction City team, pretty close. They even had a chance with just a few seconds left. Uh, they were down a couple of scores, and then they got a late TD, um, the Brown-to-Brown Brown connection. Thomas them. to Thomas. <laughs> yeah, or Thomas <laughs> to Thomas, my, my bad. Uh, pulled them within a score, and then they even got a uh, – recovered a Junction City fumble, uh, but Corey Thomas threw an interception on the very next play. But, but all in all, not a bad showing by the Trojans against a really good Junction City team. I think so, because I do think Junction City is really good. I think they're one of the top, uh, top teams in the western half of the state this year. Them and Derby, I think, will be – two of the teams that um, you might see playing in the semifinals at the end of the year. So I think it's a really good showing by Topeka High against a, a good Junction City defense, a very veteran Junction City defense. Uh, high scoring 21 is is, uh, is a pretty good sign for them, and only giving up 26 to a Junction City offense that can be pretty explosive. Their quarterback, Ryan Hennington, has a great night, rushes – for 234 yards, throws for 136 yards, and you know Javon Baldwin is their running back, but he's he's as much a, a threat in the receiving game. That's last year he was kind of their their big threat out of the backfield. They had Ray Wilson who was the big runner, and Baldwin's kind of been the guy they've thought would become the big runner, but really is kind of that that uh, Darren Sproles, you know, get the ball to him out of the backfield and see what he can do. And he has two receiving touchdowns tonight, kind of just he's been their leading receiver uh, last year and, and now this year. And uh, they've got a really potent offense. And so really for high to hold them to 26 points is, is a pretty good sign for a high defense, which over the last couple of years has been kind of one of the things that's been, been a little bit maligned about them. They've went and they've faced really good offenses. They've given up a lot of points. And, and so for them to hold Junction City to 26, I think that's a, a good thing. Yeah, we obviously didn't get to see that game, uh, but it, it looked like high gave up a fairly significant amount of yardage, but kept them out of the end zone for the most part, which was good. The final city game that was played uh, tonight saw Seaman to beat, uh, defeat Highland Park 23 to zero. This was a game that only made it that was only played uh, two quarters actually. They they never even got started in the third quarter before they called it. Seaman didn't have a big night offensively, only having about 200 yards on, of offense, but it, it, the the Vikings basically dominated High Park on on defense. Yeah, I'm guessing they probably played it pretty close to the vest tonight. Uh, it sounded like the weather got pretty bad there pretty quick. And if that's going to be the case, and, and it's a team that you think you're going to come out and handle, you're probably just going to sit there, hand the ball off, and you know whatever we get, we're going to get. Go out and get a couple touchdowns, and then just let your defense take over from there. And, and Highland Park right now, they're struggling. Absolutely. I mean, they uh, they struggled last week against Washburn Rural. They struggled this week against against Seaman. You know, 14 yards in the first half. That's <laughs> That's not going to win you many games, if no. any games. Uh, so, you know, th they're just still a work in progress, and, and th that's a good sign by Glenn O'Neill's team. You know, defense was an area where Seaman really struggled last year, and even even with the Highland Park team struggling on offense, you know, 
you have still got to come out and make them struggle. And, sure. and for Seaman to be able to do that, uh, a very good sign for them. And, and I think we'll start learning a little bit more about Seaman in the coming weeks. They played uh, Topeka West last week, Highland Park this week, which they're the two teams that are probably going to finish at the bottom of the Centennial League this year. And so now, now we'll, we'll start seeing what Glenn O'Neill has been bringing to Seaman and how they can take that next step. The other game, city game, that was supposed to be played today, uh, Hayden was traveled to Emporia. They didn't play a single snap in this one. This one's been postponed until 5 p.m. Saturday. Just real briefly, uh, you're familiar with both of these teams, obviously. What do you what do you expect from that one? Well, Hayden, you know they lost to Peak High last week, and Emporia lost to Junction City, and now we kind of flip flop. They, right. we, I kind of noticed that with the uh, Centennial League schedule. You know, you had Rural played Highland Park, Shawnee Heights played Manhattan, and then they flip flop their opponents this week. So, um, I, you know, I, I expect this is a game where Hayden will bounce back from their loss. I think Emporia had trouble getting their offense going last week, obviously against a very good Junction City defense. Sure. But uh, and and Hayden played pretty well for a half against Topeka High, then kind of let the game get away from them in, in the second half. And I know Bill Arnold's squad's going to go down there and, and be ready to go. Um, I think Emporia will be fired up for the game. This is a game that when I was down in Emporia working down there was a pretty big rivalry game. I mean, they always viewed it as a pretty big game. And whenever, and for a while, Hayden had it had the upper hand. And then when Emporia finally got him one year and got him for a couple years in a row, you know, it was it was a big deal down there. So I, I'm sure Emporia will be fired up and ready. I just think uh, I think Hayden's maybe a little bit further along at this point than, than maybe the Spartans sure. are. It's funny, the Wildcats are only a 4A school, but it seems like they're rivals with they're just rival about, with everybody. about everybody in the league, uh, which isn't a bad thing at all. It says no. a lot about their program and their sports sports teams. Uh, your game tonight, You well, it, it's another one that, that uh, we're still waiting to see how it ends. Yes, and, and eagerly what? anticipating to see how it ends because the first half was a great half of football. 21-20 at halftime. These were two teams, uh, Linden and Mission Valley out of the Flint Hills League. They shared the uh, league title last year along with Council Grove. It was a three-way tie. Mission Valley beat Linden in the regular season last year, ended their 24-game winning streak in the league, and then... They met again in the playoffs, and Linden won that game uh, by a couple touchdowns. And so you had Linden getting revenge last year, Mission Valley looking to get revenge this year. And I, I wrote in the paper today, you know, not much separated them a year ago, and not much separates them right now. Uh, you know, one point, it's, a, point, it's an extra point by Linden's kicker. Who I, I added to my all-name team already this year, Poncho Sauce. Oh, that is and a it's great probably one. that is awesome. Sauce because he's he's from uh, he's from <laughs> Spain, I think. Uh, but he's a foreign exchange student. Pancho Sauce, a little lefty, pooches it right up there. But what a, what a name! And and he's the difference right now. His his extra point. Uh, first half, very good first half. Dexton Swinehart is a uh, running back, receiver, lines up in quarterback, does a little bit of everything for Linden. Had 132 yards when the game was called uh, on the ground. And Mission Valley's Clay Phillips, their quarterback, returned an interception for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown. They got a 77-yard touchdown run from Blake Roberts. Both teams just kind of back and forth, back and forth. So I think it's going to be a, another really good half of football. They waited about two hours to try to get it in uh, during the night. Could Came back out and got about three minutes in, the lightning kind of rose back up, and then they, the crew just called and said, no, we can't do it. So they're going to try to finish that one tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and uh, it should be a whale, of a whale of a second half if the first half showed us anything. Absolutely. Well, folks, that'll wrap up uh, another edition of Extra Points for us. We thank you again for tuning in, and for all your prep coverage, log on to prepzone.com. Thanks again.